Yes, Vaidhi, we can start. Okay, so a very warm welcome to everyone. I would like to start this session with a quote from B K S Iyengar sir, which says, "Yoga is a light which once lit will never dim. The better your practice, the brighter your fame." My name is Vaidhi Bhagye, and I'll guide you through the session today. Today, I am a level one student at Swasti Yoga Center. We will start the session with Umkar prayer and Patanjali, Umkar mantra and Patanjali. So, fold your hands into Nyan Mudra. Keep them on your knees, and inhale and exhale normally. Close your eyes. Feel the breathing. We will chant Umkar thrice. Inhale deep. Take in a deeper breath and let's start. Oh. <laughs> 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 Join your hand, hands into prayer. Yogi na chitta sya pade na vacha malam sharira sya chavai dhake na lopa karottam pravaram muni na patanjalim pranjali rana tosni Rub your hands together. Feel the warmth. Place them on your eyes. Slowly open your eyes. Namaste. Now, I welcome you all to this global yoga festival, which is an all-long uh, festival started by Swasti Yoga Center, which includes a lot of activities. This was started in August 2021. this will go on every saturday and sunday there are many activities for every each and every one such as yoga and wellness sessions panel sessions quizzes live guiding sessions by speakers kirtan bhajan and chanting this is being held to commemorate 75 years of our independence this is also about giving more information about health and yoga related topics during the fight of independence techniques like satyagraha and ahimsa were taken into action these are parts of yoga so everyone can take up something or the others from this some information or the other information relevant to them through the sessions now we are honored to have udai pensi sir as today's speaker let me tell you about a little about him sir was born in 1953 in delhi he has done a diploma in yoga from kaivalya dham institute and has been teaching yoga full times for since 46 years he has also taught at, at around seven institutes tata management training center for around 20 years symbiosis center for management for 10 years sadhana center for management and leadership development for around 10 years yashoda mahagav maharashtra government training center for 31 years murtungana de addiction center for 12 years Bharat Forge for over 16 years, Indian Railway Institutes for over 20 years. He has done a lot, lot of extensive research under the topic topics of backache with Government of India, epilepsy management in Sweden, and effect of yoga on DRDO scientists. And he has men, visited a lot of countries: Germany for seven times, Spain, Russia, US, and China for his. work let us we'll welcome him with a round of applause today's topic will be applying yoga sutras of patanjali in establishing oneself in an asana 
So I'll call upon Uday Pinsa, sir. Please unmute yourself and start with the session. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I don't know whether all that you have said uh, at the end of the day when uh, people hear me, whether people would believe in uh, all that I have done, whether I have done justice to the field of yoga or not. Okay. So am I audible to everybody? Yes, sir, you are audible to everyone. Am I, are you able to see me? Yes, sir, we are able to see you. Just could you bring the mic closer to your face? Mic closer or screen closer, mic? The mic, the mic. It's not audible, is it? It it's is not, not louder, sir, but you are audible. Yeah, I don't want to be loud, you know. <laughs> I want to be uh, silently effective. Okay. So I don't know. So first of all, all those who are very much present, is everybody uh, there on the screen? Or everybody is in Parda? I hope you know what is being in Parda and being on screen. Is everybody on video? Please. Yes, some of them are, uh, the video is on, so some people the video is off. I would like to know why are they in Parda? We are not in Afghanistan. We request everyone to please keep their videos on. Yes, sir. So okay. many of them are keeping okay. their videos on. You can start. Okay. So the reason is in between if I ask, you know, and uh, I would like some kind of a basic feedback, okay? whether am I audible, whether what I'm saying is right. So you can do thumbs up and say, yes, what I'm saying is I support that. Okay. For that, I want the videos on because otherwise it is like talking to a wall. Okay. I'm talking to live human beings and I believe uh, that is very important. So the first and the foremost thing is we have recited the initial prayer, Patanjali Pranajari Ranu Tosmi. So I need to go down to, I would call him Lord Patanjali, Muni Patanjali, whatever you wish to treat him as, because there is a belief system that it is Patanjali who basically evolved Sanskrit grammar was responsible for even giving Ayurveda and the Yoga Sutras. And it was not one individual, a set of people, a set of Rishis, Munis, over a period of time, experienced something related to fundamentals of life. And that has resulted into evolving this particular Shastra. And we have got about 195 Sutras of Patanjali. So we need to go down to Lord Patanjali for giving us such a fantastic scientific version of the entire gimmick of yoga, if I have to say so. So please understand, it is a very scientific treatise because it deals with what and how. Nowhere there is a dilemma about what is the sutra trying to put across. We may fail to understand what the sutra is trying to put across. But as such, in a minimum word form, it is a fantastic way of communication. So we go down to Lord Patanjali, Rishi Patanjali, Muni Patanjali, and we now move on to going down to the linear descendant of this particular promotion of Shastra, I would request you to move to Swami Kubalananji's photograph. So here is a person who tried to, in the year 94, establish an institute at Kaivaladham called Kaivaladham. So this Kaivaladham came into existence in a very peculiar way. Some of the people don't even know the background of Swami Kubalananji. The first person who has tried to bring yoga into a laboratory. You know, something which was not 
basically understood by people then at all. In fact, he was a man belonging to Lati Kati. He was a person belonging to Akharas. But one Juma Dada in Baroda told him that, my dear, this is not your field. You better go to the field of yoga. And that is how he landed up meeting Madhav Das Maharaj and took to the field of yoga and then became one of the pioneers of a man who brought yoga into the scientific dimension. So we need to bow down. Unfortunately, before I entered the field of yoga in a formal way, he passed away in the year 1966. So I had no chance, but I did get a chance to meet so many people who had met him, who had worked with him over to Dr. Bhole now. Yeah, my, I would say guru who passed away in the, fee, in the month of April this year at the age of 85. A unique person with MD physiology as the background, a person who brought yoga into a very peculiar way of putting across. And you will be able to see that peculiar dimension, the manner in which I would try to present the Shastra to all of you. He always insisted on experiencing. He said, experiencing, experiencing, penetratively, deeply getting into you is going to reveal something fundamental to you. And we bow down to you, Dr. Bhole, for fantastically teaching us so beautifully in the year 1974-75 when I underwent my training at Kaivalita. Yeah, now let's move on to the sutras of Patanjali. Okay, so we come across these four sutras. The first three sutras are in sequence from the very first chapter, trying to offer the science of yoga and trying to say, here it is, here and now. One of the most important things that I want you to understand is if you look at the structure, Patanjali describes Chitta Vritti Nirodha, Yoga is Chitta Vritti Nirodha, and immediately tells you what happens as a resultant effect of the Chitta Vritti Nirodha. What happens is something which is interesting to us because ultimately when we do yoga, we practice yoga, what does it give you? What does it lead you to an experience? It says that you are then able to become a drashta of your swarupa avastha. So right at the beginning, and this is Patanjali Yoga Darshana. Okay, let me put it very explicitly in a Swedish way, in a rough way, whatever you basically call it as. We all accept Patanjali's sutras as, I would say, the Bible of yoga, if you want to use the word Bible, if you want to use Quran or whatever, that is the sutra form of all the yoga institutes in the world believe and accept yoga sutras as their guide. But unfortunately, I begin to feel that this aspect is being missed out. If we say that it is a Darshan Shastra, in today's time, if you really see I hear some disturbances. Anybody's mic is on? I don't know. Okay. I feel that it is all becoming demonstrative in nature. A lot of showmanship is coming up in the picture. Where is the word? It is all Darshan Shastra. It is not Pradarshan Shastra. Today's yoga, the way I see the fallacy of it, is it is all becoming Pradarshan Shastra. Patanjali is talked of Dirga Kala Nairantarya Satkara Asevito Bhumihi is the manner in which you have to put your efforts. You need persistent effort. You need a revering attitude, a seva bhava, if your practice has to become perfect. Please do not miss out on the third sutra, Tada Drashtuhu Swarupe Avasthanam. That is going to be my 
central theme in all that I speak, all through, you have to remind yourself, you have to be a drashta and not a karta. Drashta is different, karta is different. You have to do something, you have to naturally, without doing anything, nothing is going to happen. But if you just land up doing and doing and doing minus the feeling, then you are gone. You are not in line, in tune, with what the sutras say. So, Dirga Kala, Nairantarya, Satkara Sevito Bhumihi is the manner in which the Abhyasa becomes a Druda. Next, please. We now jump to the chapter wherein we are coming to the definition of what Ishwara has been looked upon by the sutras. It is described as the earliest of the earliest gurus and indivisible by time. It talks of that the Vaka Swarup of the Ishwara is Pranava and the Bhava of Ishwara gets evolved by the Japa of Omkara. So you should not in any way miss out this proper linkage that the sutras talk of. Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha, the Vaka Swarup of the Ishwara Tattva is received by us, is generated by a bhava by way of its recitation. Tat Japas Tadartha Bhavanam. That bhava is going to be created as a resultant effect of the Vaka Swarup that is expected through Pranava. So please bear this dimension in mind. Next, please. Yeah, let us come to one of the most important areas and on which I will precisely be talking is when we look at asanas, the manner in which the asanas are promoted or being done or the manner in which it is practiced I sometimes fail to understand whether people are wanting to basically do acrobatics. What are we trying to do? If it is all trying to show off, going to miss out the basically drashta bhava. And even when you look at the sutras, they're so interesting. Sthira Sukham Asanam, I've been telling off late to people that you should try and look at the terminologies really well. Patanjali has only spent three sutras for the field of asanas. Here I have to clarify that even Gherenda Samhita, Hatha Yoga, all these treatises have very clearly mentioned that they come into existence for the purpose of Raja Yoga, for the purpose of Ashtanga Yoga. They are not just there to manipulate the physicalness of the posturing dimension. The purpose is ultimately pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi or to be a drashta of the self. So this sthira sukham, the word sukha is not just comfortable. Sthirata leading to sukhadata is an asana. Now the greater the stability, the greater will be the dimension of sukha coming into play. The word sukha needs to be understood. The word sukha is ka is space. You have to start becoming aware of the spaces in you. You will say where there is space. There is space. The fact that there is movement. Whenever you have any kind of a health problem, what are you really doing today? You go, you are taken to ultrasound. So what is done is USG report is taken, your EEG is taken, your ESG is taken. So what is it that they pick up? They pick up vibrations. So if there is a movement, there has to be space. So the entire gimmick of sthira sukham is the greater the sthirata, you are going to start enjoying the spaces in you. There is space in the gastric system. 
There is space at the spinal level. There is space in the heart. There is space in the lungs. There is space. And because there is space, movement exists, impulses exist. So you have to develop an approach of greater and greater sthirata to enjoy the spaces within you. If you start just doing and doing and doing and don't get stabilized in an asana, there is no chance of you trying to feel, trying to introspect, trying to go deep into yourself. The next sutra is Prayatna Shaitilya Ananda Samapati Bhyam. Well, as long as you're doing things with a lot of efforts, you are going to be effort oriented. You're going to be more muscle minded. You will not be able to get into the principle of infinitism that is expected by way of Prayatna Shaitilya. What does it talk of? Ananta Samapati Bhyam. You are able to get the glimpse of Anantata in you. And Tatod Vandvana Bhigataha is efferent, efferent impulses, the two-way traffic between brain and you, you and the brain is bound to improve. The next slide, please. Now here I'm just going to touch upon two interesting areas. One is Nabi Chakre Kaya Vyuha Jnanam and Kurma Nadiyam Sthaidyam. So because the word Sthaidyam with Kurma Nadi has come in, there is a person who says that Kurma Vayu, those who are from the field of Ayurveda would know much more than what we would possibly know, that Kurma Vayu has something to do with the eyeball movement. And all of us have seen that if you're doing postures in standing, if you gaze at an object, your balance improves, which means you become more stable. So if you are able to understand the value of Kurma Vayu and become more stable in an asana, and if you're able to start allowing your eyeballs to become steadier and steadier, you're going to start realizing subtler and subtler spaces in you. Nabi Chakre Kaya Vyuha Jnanam is the space in the gastric system. If you're able to start being there, you're going to get a chance to take a glimpse of the entire gimmick of your existence. Let's move the next. Okay, so I hope I have tried to put across my basic ideology about looking at sutras. I want you in crystal clear way together and tell yourself, you want to be a drashta of the self. There is no need for competition of any nature because there is nobody on this planet like you. There is no duplicate of you. Your signature is exclusive. Your voice is exclusive. You are exclusive. And why do you want to compromise on your exclusiveness by trying to match with somebody else? It is not required. So trying your best to be yourself fully, allowing that to bloom fully, allowing that to in a way shape up fully would be what yoga expects out of you. Your fragrance is your fragrance. There is no competition between a rose and maybe some other flower. The beauty of the rose, the fragrance of the rose, the fragrance of mogra, fragrance of lavender, they have their own structure. They have got their own fantastic aroma. So in the same way, why not allow your individual self to bloom well? understand the purpose of life well, because the moment you become a drashta, your entire path on which you're going to walk in life is going to become clear. I have this student of mine, to call her a student is a difficult proposition because she is going to be guru of so many people with time to come, is Vikalpa Madam right now, she is at Delhi and has done this shoot at Delhi and sent it across. So let's look at first these postures. And I would like to know if any of you would like to try 
you know, that is the reason why I said that I would like your videos to be on. Any of you would like to try any of the postures right away in the last 10 minutes, I would be able to help you out, experience something fundamental. Let's look at first all the four postures, then if required, I would go in for one particular slide and ask the person who is cooperating to put this particular posture. So you should know the first posture is halasan. Yes, let's have a look at the video. Somebody would say that in my entire life, I will never be able to get my feet there. Well, that is perfect. What you are able to do, you should be able to do this, do this much. But truly, what do I want you to observe? I want you to realize is the breathing movement and the breathing pattern in this posture. It's very interesting. Because we are looking for spaces in an asana, my dear. So in halasana, at the initial stage, it appears effortful. When you go to a stage when the legs are now on the floor, you can put them on the chair if you like, or a stool, or on a. If the toes don't reach the floor, you can put them on any of the platforms. But still, you will be able to get a fantastic expansion, retraction movement at the level of the lower part of the body. Entire lower abdomen, entire area below the ribs will be opening and closing like blooming of a flower with every breath. We have been able to show explicitly that in a posture like halasan, which looks so difficult, complicated for quite some of you, even in a posture like this, the respiratory rate can come down to just five and six per minute, whereas our average respiratory rate is in the range of 15 to 18 per minute, which that asanas are not at all sympathetic in nature. They are totally parasympathetic in nature. They basically work in trying to be restful, they create fantastic mobility. They allow degree of freedom of breath all over the core body to get enhanced because in day-to-day -day life, we block areas. We don't let movement take place all over. Either we are too tensed or we are too flaccid. And for movement to take place, space is necessary only then movement is going to happen. Imagine you are in a closed room and you start closing yourself more and more and more and more and more. You will find you will not be able to hear anything around, which means space and movement are so peculiarly correlated. Let's go to the next posture, which is a modification. And for those who have been doing this, in fact, this is one of the postures which we evolved over a period of time for a particular project in the management of epilepsy. And here again, something very interesting, the number of breaths, and that is why I said, if there's anybody wanting to try, the last five minutes I would like to spend with you if you wish to that how is the breath happening? Here too, the breath is abdominal and the number of breaths, friends, interestingly, come down to two and three. This is one of the postures which was taken up during the management of epilepsy for a project that we designed for the management of epilepsy and comparative study between cognitive behavioral science at Sweden 
And patients, even with medicines and drugs, could not go off to sleep, slept off in an asan like this. There is nothing wrong, even if you have problem with sleep, you try this portion, nothing wrong is going to happen. Whole night, even if you're like this, no harm will happen. The greatest thing that seems to be happening, and in fact, I'm interested in doing some further work. And recently there has been an inquiry from one of the spine specialists to further look at this posture. What is it so peculiar about it that it is generating this much of a quietening effect? Move to the next posture, please. There's a similar version on the chest and you have to do it on either side. People always get confused. Are we supposed to do it only on one side? No, generally if it is left to right, then right to left is understood. This is again a interesting posture, crocodile on chest, again a modification utilized at that time. You lock up the two legs and just freely rotate, surrender it to gravity. And when the left hip is up, the left cheek goes down. Here again, the respiratory rate comes down to just two and three per minute. You can imagine the kind of relaxation this posture is capacitive to give because decompression of the vertebrae is the most important thing. It is something like, I would put it across that what is happening by decompression is you're allowing the spinal fluid to move freely. You are allowing basically the movement from the brain to the body, what is in today's time, a one lane traffic to six lane autobahn, so this is what is really happening. The spinal column opens up. This is what was seen in one of the image intensifier work that we did with one of the orthopedic surgeons. Unfortunately, he's no more. But what we saw was the vertebrae not only get decompressed, but the spinal column with twist opens up almost two to three times than the normal. So the takeaway should be that do all twists and try and do twists on a very relaxed background and surrender. Please don't try to do a posture. My teacher always said, when doing ends, the posture begins. Asan kab shuru hota hai? Jab tak aap asan kar rahe ho, tab tak wo asan hai hi nahi. Jab karna khatam hua, and that happening is really what is wanted. You have to become a drashta, not a karta. Let's look at the next posture. Again, all the load has to be along the hips and the elbows, the crown of the head is not expected to carry load. Very interesting. When the close-up is seen, you will find fantastic movement to breath because breathing is a hotline to the jiva. I always have been saying the jiva existed before you were born, but the breath was post birth and that is the unique link between you and the jiva look at the abdomen look at the lower abdomen look at the fantastic movement related to breath right from the groin to the whole of the nabi zone and here again the number of breaths with persistent practice of a few minutes will help you relax so beautifully it is a classic posture when we talk of in terms of management of scare, fear, people sometimes get too subdued. You know, they are the people who should be given posture like Matsyasan. Very interesting a posture, very interesting a posture. It's a question of you responding to what is happening rather than doing. You have to do, but you have to learn to start doing it more and more in an effortless way. So prayatna shaitilya should be your mission. Reduction of efforts is going to bring in ananda samapatti. Greater the stability, 
the sukha dimension, the spaces will open up in you. So it is almost about 35 minutes of which maybe 30 minutes I was with you. I always say that if you have spent 30 minutes with me, I'm accountable. When I say I'm accountable, I should have given you something in half an hour. Then my life is worth it. If you have not received anything in 30 minutes for making you think in a new way, my life is a big waste and I would request you to pardon me. I'm very clear on my fundamentals. I won't want anybody to waste time for me. If you do yoga, learn to start feeling yoga, not do. Learn from doing to happening because happening is the most important issue. I have been putting this question and my teacher always questioned this. What call can you do? You can do things on the wrong path, but you have to bring yourself on the right path. What do we mean by that? Breathing happens, heartbeats happen, digestion happens, you happen to sleep. Everything keeps happening. And we, as with intense ego, keep on saying, I am the doer. My dear, you are not the doer. I hope Corona has taught us something fundamental in life. And let us pray to Lord, let us pray to Patanjali, Swami Kuvalananaji and my teacher for passing on this fundamental knowledge to me. And knowledge, if applied, is worth it. Otherwise, it is going to go down the drain. Information is not education. Education has to be very fundamentally different. It must lead you to actually do something meaningful. It has to be applied. Just bringing a soap home cannot give you a clean bath. You have to use the soap up fresh and get the best out of the said soap. So use yoga like a soap to give an actual firsthand experience. Please don't compare yourself with anybody else in the world. You are unique. You are exclusive. You are fantastic. Even Lord is not interested in manufacturing another being like you. So be yourself, true to yourself. Become a drashta of yourself is the only message I would like to give. We have a few minutes in case there is anything we can interact. If you want to try crocodile, you can try crocodile. I can give you instructions. Over to the authorities. The slide part is over. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for this wonderful and, and interesting presentation. Are there any volunteers for the poses which sir asked for? Are there any queries or questions related to the topics? You can give them my email address. Simple as that, so that we don't spend time here. Because somebody's question may not necessarily have any relevance to somebody else's question. Okay, so you can always, my email address is simple, Savita, the first important entity in my life, my wife, then me, that is Uday, U-D-A-Y, the year of my marriage, 84. So Savita Uday, 84 at gmail.com. Everything in small caps? Everything in small, yeah. Savita, S-A-V-I-T-A. Because mm -hmm. just Uday is not enough, you know, you need Surya Uday. So that is why Savita is first. Surya ka Uday. So Savita Uday, 84 at gmail.com. Can crocodile be done in sitting posture? I mean, uh, who is this? I don't know. Who is this person? Somebody has asked. I'm not able to get the question back there. You can put the slide off. Bhaskar, sir, you can unmute yourself and ask. Oh, thank you, sir. 
uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering if there's also a possibility to have this crocodile post uh, during um, during the daytime in our in our office. Uh, oh, who is that, Basker? It's me, Basker. Yes. Hey, my dear, come on. You can do that in sitting, no problem. Basker, basic twist is going to give you effect. Okay. The twist will only give you effect for decompression of the vertebrae. But the real mm -hmm. relaxing effect will be lying on the back or on chest because in a supine position, there is maximum rest to the spine. When we sit, there is load on the spine. When we I stand, understand. there is further load on the spine because ours is a load-bearing construction. Okay. Are you getting? Ours is a load-bearing structure, which means mm. if you are standing, the weight of the head is through the neck coming to the shoulders. The weight of the trunk is coming around the hips. From the hips, it gets transmitted through the quadriceps, calf muscles, etc., to the foot floor. So from the top to the bottom, that is how the load is uniformly, properly distributed and managed. So with respect to Standing, there is less load in sitting, further less load when you're lying down, and least load is in water when you're mm. floating. Every vertebra is supported by water column independently. And Thank that you. is why you have water beds in hospitals. Have you got me? Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Baskar, sir. Okay, so I think we can say ahua to all of you. Uh, it's good enough. So, friends, thank you. Keep smiling and always have that shine and glow on the eyes to look at what fantastic world is there. Don't get bogged down by what is happening around. Corona is corona. Forget about it. Whatever it is, it is. Just come out alive and enjoy life thoroughly inside out. In this body, I always say, in this body, you are not going to be born again. So in this body, in this living system, in this living system, the Ru that exists, the Jeev that exists, take darshan of that and come out fantastically, glowingly beautiful. Look at the kind of inquisitiveness that is there on the face of that child, the spark in the eyes. Let that smile and spark come on your face. Don't say I practice yoga, I live yoga. That is the expression that is there on the face of this fantastic young child. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, I would request everyone to unmute themselves and give a big round of applause to sir. It is rarely we have this kind of an opportunity to be blessed with a true, true drashta, a guru who illuminates our mind and takes out the tamas, the andhakar and helps us to see the world the way it is. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, it had been uh, throughout for, from on behalf of whole Swasti family, we would really uh, like to thank you for taking your time, valuable time, and blessing us with this kind of wisdom. Uh, how to look towards the Yoga Sutras, how to look towards asanas, what is yoga? You have very wonderfully uh, put your um, light on it, the way we have Pradipika. So you have illuminated uh, this topic very, very well. And um, I would again, once again, uh, thank you for uh, this wonderful talk. What do you want to share, Ramandeep? Ramandeep wants to share something. Yes, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, actually, I've been practicing uh, this crocodile uh, thing and uh, variation. And uh, I used to do it before, but that time I never paid attention, as sir already told, because I got to know that, you know, you need to experience it. Well, uh, earlier I used to do it, so I, I used to feel relaxed and my back used to feel nice. 
but when i started paying attention to it i could actually feel relaxed so uh, you know I, i had that perception that when you do pranayam that time or maybe when you do dhyan you feel relaxed but in a posture uh, i enjoyed so much that i make it a point i start my yoga practice with that every day and i can feel it you know ki okay, you actually the uh, respiratory rate goes down and immediately you feel so nice it, as uh, it's such, such a simple practice but it it you feel really amazing you feel really wonderful so thank you so much sir for bringing out that and pointing out the the importance of experiencing so thank you so much sir i would uh, highly recommend everyone to give it a shot this is my personal experience thank you so much thank you thank you so much Thank you, Raman. You are Raman Maharshi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Would anyone else like to participate? Ask any queries? If there are no queries, I would like to end this session with a prayer. Shanti mantra. I want to say. Okay, sure. Yes. So, uh, जिस तरीके से आप बता रहे थे कि जो पोस्टर है जो बड़ा पोस्टर है वो जो सिटिंग में जब आप करते हैं और जो लाइन डाउन पोजिशन में करते हैं दोनों के बेनिफिट्स अलग अलग होते हैं ना सर जमीन आसमान जमीन आसमान का फर्क है जी सर मगर यदि कोई लेट नहीं पा रहा है और उसको थोड़ा बहुत इफेक्ट चाहिए तो ठीक है ना बैठ के ऑफिस में है तो क्या करेगा बेचारा जी सर ऑफिस में अभी आजकल कोरोना की वजह से लोग कुछ भी कर रहे हैं वो बात अलग है मगर ऐसे सोने के लिए तो जगह नहीं मिलेगी ना ऑफिस बिल्कुल सर तो बैठ के थोड़ा बहुत डीकम्प्रेशन स्पाइन का हो जाए काफी है ना इसलिए उसने पूछा था भास्कर ने इसलिए मैंने क्लियरिफाई करवाया मुझे थोड़ा डाउट था इसलिए मैंने सोचा मैं आपसे एक बार पूछ लू क्योंकि नॉर्मली तो हम लोग रोज तो ऐसे ही करते है ना करना अभी प्रेत है बैठ के मत करो न तो आप कहोगे चलो बैठ के शॉर्टकट सर जी कैसे तो हो सकता है स्पोर्ट्स वाले लोग शॉर्टकट बहुत जल्दी चाहते हैं नहीं आपके बंदे हैं हम ऐसे कैसे करेंगे थैंक यू बाय बाय या वैदेही जी यस let uh, the next session let me tell you about the next session will be about the yogic values in spanish uh, and catalan culture the speaker would be laura moncho so that would be the next session we will end this session with shanti mantra thank you the princess sir joining in thank you everyone else for joining in and attending this wonderful session close your eyes and fold your hands in prayer position inhale calm down your breath om sahana bhavatu sahana bhunaktu sahaviryam karvagahai tejas vinavati tumastum vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 hi Namaste thank you everyone yeah.